Front Machine Gun Hazard for the Super Famicom is a side-scrolling action RPG that completely diverges from the tactical RPG staples of other entries in the series. The plot is very heavy and involved, and the setting is a future time where energy resources are scarce. A global project that had unified the efforts of many nations to harness renewable solar energy suddenly eroded, pushing the world back to the edge of imminent war. The game opens with an important escort mission where you, playing as a soldier named Albert, have to help your nation's president escape the country of Bergen after rebel forces initiate a hostile takeover. The invasion is led by a power-hungry leader named Ark Halbrand, and despite Albert's best efforts to save the president, they're both eventually captured. In prison, he meets Brenda Lockhart, who helps him break out of jail, and she convinces Albert to flee with her overseas to take up a job as a mercenary after he's branded a pariah by Ark and his henchmen. After being forced to leave his family behind and abandon the country he served, Albert's one objective becomes taking down Ark and returning home to liberate Virgin to resume his normal life. The mercenary missions that Albert and company embark upon are the bread and butter of the game. These have the party traveling all over the world on assignments that ramp up in difficulty as the game marches on, with each throwing you headfirst into problems that different nations are facing against Ark's forces. Many of these terminate in a boss battle of sorts that has to be won before moving on in the story, but to get there, many shorter missions have to be completed first. These different scenarios are shown as zones on the overworld map and vary in their intensity, length, and goal. The gameplay could be described as on rails in a sense because new expeditions only open up when available ones are completed, but you do have the freedom to revisit stages as many times as you like. Since Front Mission Gun Hazard is incredibly plot-heavy, it makes sense that the order things unfold is important. Even if the story seems to be endlessly churning out new surprises, the gameplay itself with its battles you face are always the same enjoyable recipe for explosive destruction. The stages are side-scrolling action segments where you have a Wanzer to commandeer. These are extremely customizable bipedal mechs, and more options to deck out the machine become available to purchase only as you level up your character. In a nutshell, you have a base weapon with unlimited ammo that you can change out depending on your personal preferences, as well as a shield and a slew of other sub-weapons that you have to buy ammunition for. As a hoarder of all things consumable in RPGs, I loved the fact that my base weapon didn't cost me anything to use, and I tended to shy away from anything that parted me with my money, especially early in the game. From the get-go, I subscribed to the shotgun weapon for its range and power over the others, but having the option to switch to something more appropriate between brawls if something wasn't working out was a welcome feature. A unique detail here, on top of normal character leveling, is that individual components of the mech can be leveled further than their base value by using them to increase their efficiency. Weapons become more powerful and reload faster, and other things like your vernier unit, which help to propel you vertically, can get you further or keep you in the air a bit longer. It pays to choose something you like early on and work on leveling it to get the most out of it, but changing your mind and trying something new isn't the end of the world either. Visiting a new geographical location usually guaranteed meeting a new comrade, and these people can either be dragged out to fight by your side or called upon in battle from afar, like Brenda's aerial assault. There were a few instances where certain individuals had to come with you because of their particular skill set, but it was nice to have the freedom to pick and choose the people that suited my playstyle best. I usually stuck with someone that could help me fight, and even though there was a healer available, his robot hugs didn't quite cut it for me when things were going south. In some games, when you gain new party members, they'll come in all week and flabby at level 1, but here, they join at an appropriate level for where you meet them in the story. There aren't too many difficulty spikes to take on, but not having to worry about grinding levels for a weak character was a load off my shoulders. Unfortunately, your team members only gain experience as they're used in battle with you, so one downside is that if you never take them out, they never become any stronger. Like Albert, as they level, they can also unlock different weapons and new upgrades for their mechs. It's amazing just how much personal customization you're privy to, and I think trying out different partners, weapons, or sub-weapons offers some substantial replay value. The AI on your comrades is not great. While they do land hits and are helpful compared to not having them at all, there were times when they would just be sitting on the sidelines firing away at nothing while I was getting clobbered. The only control you really have over them in battle is healing them or ordering them to retreat if things start to get hairy, but managing them can be more of a burden than anything. If they are extremely low on health and start whining at you about not being able to take much more damage on, you'd better make sure that you tell them to leave that second, because otherwise their mech will be destroyed and basically disappear from your inventory. 
even if you want to bring them back out in battle again, unless you want their puny bodies to be blasted off screen in about 5 seconds, it'll be off to the shop to fork out a small fortune for a new Wanzer that they'll probably just blow up too. While this didn't happen often, it happened often enough that I had to spend time grinding for money while grumbling about a system that doesn't always give you enough time to react in desperate situations. Another terrible thing that can happen in battle is accidentally ejecting from your own mech. I haven't mentioned yet that Gun Hazard not only has sections where you fight in your fully armored machine, but also imposes stretches that you have to endure on foot, forcing you to leave your mech behind for a short time. I want to mention how much I loved the scale of unarmored fighters versus the walking tanks. It really emphasized just how weak you were without them. Anyway, while on foot, Albert can use a handgun and grenades, and upgrades for these and personal armor become available as you level, just like everything else. While fighting without the security of the mech wasn't a regular occurrence, it was a fun change to the same repetitive formula of the other segments. Getting back to my original point though, when you leave your mech unattended to see what's down a tiny hallway, it's still susceptible to damage from enemies. And if something evil finds it while you're away, it's gonna get blown up on you. Accidental ejection happened to me in boss fights a few times when I'd be trying to access the menu for healing items. I'd press the wrong button, Albert would hop out, and I wouldn't even realize it since he was so small compared to everything else in these visually busy battles. Most of the time, I didn't even know what had happened until it was too late, and I think I had to replace Albert's mech at least twice throughout the game. It was completely my fault, but frustrating nonetheless. I want to elaborate on the story more, but the truth is, it's one of the most engrossing parts about playing this game through for yourself. There's a lot of philosophy around war, what it means to fight for the side of right, and a lot of painful reminders about how history is always told from the winner's perspective. I've barely scratched the surface of what unfurls along this storyline for the sake of keeping spoilers at a minimum, but it starts to feel like a great book you can't put down after a while. Even though the battles are a literal blast, they do tend to stagnate after what feels like the millionth walk to the right and shoot everything situation. The translation patch localization efforts of Aeon Genesis are tremendous and the presentation of the story was remarkably well done. Aside from the really overused all right from Albert that I heard in the disembodied voice from Bible Buffet every time I read it, the rest of the story really drew me in. And while I enjoy a dense and riveting plot in my RPGs, Front Mission Gun Hazard had maybe a little too much of that. The thread of the plot stretched through countless people and places, had several significant twists, and also pulled a Lord of the Rings by having several ending points beyond where I thought the story wrapped up nicely. The characters and their development through countless exposition scenes were the true glue that held this whole experience together. Every ally had their own fleshed out story arc, and even more importantly, there were meaningful dynamics cultivated between the team members that you just don't see in a lot of other games from this era. Their banter was reminiscent of something like Phantasy Star 4 without the cool comic book style interludes mind you, but you get a real sense of who these people are, why they're motivated to join forces with Albert, and how they feel about one another. There are some roll your eyes cheese moments folded in here and there, but having characters with palpable personalities carved out something that I feel is really special for the time. In hindsight, it's easy to see that a game like Front Mission Gun Hazard would have been a welcome and diverse addition to the North American Super Nintendo RPG library, but it regrettably never made the jump overseas. We did luckily end up with Cybernator, a side-scrolling shooter that boasts a lot of visual and gameplay similarities to Gun Hazard, but it's hard to say if a full-fledged RPG in that vein would have been successful here at the time of its release. That said, this game is one of the most visually stunning, fleshed-out RPGs from this era that I've encountered. Even if it feels a bit too long at times, its compartmentalized gameplay and excellent story make it something worth seeking out for the most casual or serious lovers of RPGs.